Okay, so uh, this is the Chaos Asia meeting on uh, May 16th, um, 2024. And uh, I am Divya Mohan, the lead for the Asian chapter. So uh, today we uh, have a little bit of an audience. And I guess, um, honestly speaking, um, since... Everyone here is new and uh, probably doesn't know each other. Do you all want to um, go ahead and introduce yourself? No need to turn on the camera if you all are not comfortable. Um, but do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? I can start with myself, um, if that helps. Uh, I am uh, Divya Mohan, as I said before. I lead the Asian chapter uh, for chaos. And Asia does not mean India alone. Uh, going by the attendee list, I feel like uh, that needs to be said. <laughs> um, but uh, essentially, um, <clears throat> uh, outside of the uh, work that I do with chaos, I'm also a uh, maintainer for docs on Kubernetes, so a community co-chair with uh, uh, Bytecode Alliance. And... Uh, uh, I also have a day job uh, as uh, the principal technology advocate with SUSA. So um, that's a bit about me. Uh, who wants to go next? I'm not going to put anyone on the spot, but who wants to go next? I can go next. Yeah. Sure. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, I'm Navi. I'm basically a front-end engineer. Uh, I come with about uh, eight years of experience. Uh, I've worked with probably uh, five, six uh, product-based companies. Uh, I I worked with a feature that was uh, a live chat feature with a conversational platform. And that's when I uh, got into DevOps because I had to work with Docker and it was a rabbit hole. Uh, I recently uh, got my CK certification. Uh, yeah, that's a little about me. Nice to meet you, Naveen. Um, yeah. Who wants to go next? Uh, I can go next. Uh, can, you, can you hear me? Right. Yes, we can hear you fine. Uh, yeah, so hi, I'm Dion. I work as a customer success at Solar.io. Uh, I have like different interests in hardware, Kubernetes, home labs, and that stuff. Uh, experience wise, I'm like around four years, I guess, in the industry. I don't Code a much, code a lot, but sometimes, yeah, that's a good. Welcome, Neon. Uh, Gursuma, do you want to go next since you're the only other person? Um, or if you prefer not coming on the mic, that's also fine. You can type no, out your okay, go. Yeah, okay. So, uh, so. In, short, in brief, I'm a Google Developer Educator and a consultant, mainly working in DevOps and Cloud. Apart from that, I'm associated with a lot of communities such as Code Your Future, Container Days, and a lot. Yeah. I'll just have it over there. Yeah, yeah that's fine. I mean, uh, uh, that short introduction is fine. And I also see that Manal has joined us. Hi, Manal. Um, Hello. He's been Hi, up a bit. So... Yeah, we're uh, we're just doing a round of introductions because um, there are quite a few people on here who are new. So, uh, do you want to introduce yourself as well? Yeah, sure. So, hello everyone. I'm Manul. Uh, I'm working as a software engineer. I'm, I'm currently based out of Mumbai. Uh, last year, I graduated. And uh, yeah, it's been like a month since I have been part of Chaos. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited about open source in general. Okay. Uh, so since our round of introductions are done, um, and uh, we probably need to get started with the agenda for today. But uh, before that, um, I think I should also set some context around what uh, Chaos as a project does. Uh, basically... <clears throat> Uh, we think a lot about uh, community health and uh, uh, open source project health in obviously the open source ecosystem. So um, a lot of it is um, thought about in terms of metrics and models um, related to, you know, these particular um, verticals and how we actually uh, can present 
uh, them to a broader audience and ha help them visualize all of this stuff. Um, so there are different areas that we actually look at um, specific to these. Uh, it's like even when you talk about open source projects, they can be um, viewed from a business perspective. They can be views, viewed from an academic perspective, um, can be viewed from a research standpoint. Um, there are various areas that, um, you know, you can view these from. So um, a lot of the... Um, work that gets done is uh, segregated into these working groups so that um, we have like adequate amount of perspectives coming in when we develop these metrics. And um, one of the things that um, I think was started before I came in and was the original um, genesis story for the chapter was that they also had like regional perspectives coming in because as you all probably know um open source uh, uh meetings in general are not held at a very uh convenient time for uh people coming in from asia and even for people coming in from um other time zones it's mostly focused on um you know western friendly time zones so a lot of the people who are situated elsewhere um do not get the opportunity to participate and obviously the ecosystem around open source uh, is also um, very diverse and it's very different in Asia as compared to say uh, in uh, Europe or in um, America it's more um, it's different across countries it's also different across uh, you know uh, specific regions even within the Asian continent so the aim for this uh, uh, for these regional chapters was to sort of um, drive awareness and uh, help these various um, uh, regions to actually um, drive more uh, visibility into open source community health and open source project health uh, via uh, these regional chapters. So that's that's a bit about uh, what we do. Now, I know that this sounds like a lot and it sounds like it's a it's it's very broadly scoped. So I'm going to pause there for a bit and uh, see if anyone has questions before we actually dive into the agenda for today. Like, please feel free to ask questions uh, because uh, this chapter is fairly new. Um, we've just, we're just two months into our inception, like the current broaden scope chapter. So it would be really helpful if, you know, people have doubts and, uh, you know, you ask them out loud. No questions are stupid. Um, also, before uh, you'll ask questions, can anybody actually uh, volunteer to take notes, please? Uh, because I'm uh, I'm recording this and I will shortly be putting up my screen for sharing. So I can't take notes. Can somebody volunteer to take notes? Okay, um, so uh, Leon's agreed to take notes. Um, yeah, we can flesh it out later, not a problem. Even if you don't take the extent of it, we can, uh, if you bullet point most of what I said, that's also fine. So I'm assuming a lot of you don't have doubts because nobody's asked any. Um, and I'm directly going to the share uh, screen side of it and going to our agenda. Uh, even if you have anything during the agenda or uh, any questions or anything, please feel free to raise your hand and we'll get to the question, okay? Okay, so um, 
essentially, like I told you before, we are uh, still in the process of bootstrapping. We began in March. Um, so I took this over from Jaya, who was the previous Chaos Asia lead. Um, she had to pause her efforts here uh, because she was working on her PhD. And um, essentially, I had to speak to her to gain a basic understanding of what was being done earlier on. So... Uh, um, the interested parties earlier on uh, were from uh, Chinese OSPOS, that is open source program offices. Um, and the work done primarily was to translate the chaos um, website into, uh, sorry, into Chinese. Uh, now, I think that effort was abandoned uh, because I don't see a translation right now. Um, areas where they would potentially um as a community uh like to get involved in in the future would be to actually standardize metrics now um i told um on this call earlier on right uh, that we have a lot of metrics and metric models uh to um, judge an open source community's health or an open source project's health. Um, so we are looking at standardizing those metrics. And by standardizing, I mean, uh, I mean like the ISO standardization effort. We are trying to do that. And um, uh, the Chinese folks are uh, interested in that. Um, and uh, Zhao has actually um, kindly agreed to facilitate that conversation with them. Uh, but there's also a significant amount of challenges in getting them involved because um, obviously there's a whole uh, platform issue in communication, right? Uh, uh, we don't have access to any of the Chinese apps and they have like a VPN to tie it over to get to us. So... Uh, that is something we are going to try and uh, streamline because um, there's also the next, um, uh, there's also another point down where I've reached out to uh, the Japanese um, OSPO uh, uh, group, which is part of Open Chain for standardization efforts. And um, we found out a way for them to actually be involved. Okay, so um, we we are streamlining it for them. So maybe we'll uh, try doing a similar thing or have them join the same streamlining call that we're trying for uh, the Japanese folks. So that's that's the summary here. Uh, does anyone have a question here? Okay, so... Hello? Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you uh, brief me about uh, the uh, parameters or the metrics on which chaos is uh, measuring the community health? Yeah, sure. Uh, you can just go to https chaos dot community, and uh, our entire metric metric models and the software that we use, right? All of that is listed there. So, if you go here. My net is a little slow. So if you can see here, we've divided the metrics into various uh, various categories. So you can go to each of these categories and see the metrics that are defined. In fact, uh, we've uh, you can also suggest new metrics after going through all of them, of course, um, and uh, see if that's something that you want to be involved in. And um, if you're curious how this actually translates to real world impact, um, there's also a visualization tool, uh, which I hope I can show you, but uh, um, I think it's yours and uh, Ogo. So this is basically um, the Augur and uh, Grimoire tool that's there. And... Uh, we have these um um we have these uh two tools to actually take in uh and ingest the data and actually output the data to um um you know a website which is easily accessible so if you look here you'll understand that uh, this is the way we visualize those metrics that we were talking about and um 
in case of like how we uh, actually you know facilitate these conversations when it comes to events or even projects um there's uh badging i guess yeah badging dot chaos dot community so i recently became a badger as well uh, which is a very funny thing to say but also very cute so uh uh, there's a badging community here uh, and you can apply to be a part of it as well. So we essentially, um, uh, based on the uh, information provided by the events uh, and um, event organizers rather and project maintainers, we sort of uh, assign badges uh, and these badges also go through these metrics. So, for example, I do not know if I have that uh, 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 have that uh, badge. That's the first badging uh, PR that I was involved as part of. Okay, so I don't know the repository clearly. <laughs> Let me just check. Um, but essentially, we help uh, in the case of projects and in the case of events, we sort of help uh, people decipher if they are uh, aligning with the metrics that uh, are part of uh, uh, chaos uh, and are adhering to them and you know how much of it they adhere to based on the uh, badge that we give. So I'm going to see where that is. But uh, essentially, that's it. Um, uh, does that answer your question though? Uh, yeah, great. Okay, so yeah, this is the one here. Um, uh, so these just let me see uh, if that is there. No, there's another one. Hey. Uh, is this the one? Nope. I recently did that, so I'm gonna link that somewhere here, but I don't know where it is. Uh, where is that patching my chaos is separate? Uh -huh. So here, I think it's event. Hopefully, it's the event. Yeah. So, if you see here, these, uh, the folks actually submit. If you click apply now here, you can choose between your event and your project. And uh, suppose, you know, you go to the event, they'll walk, they'll have a UI uh, wherein you actually um, can select whether it's an in-person or a virtual event and actually go through the whole process of applying. So this is specific to, again, DEI um, when it comes to events and projects. But um, yeah, that's that's the thing that, um, you know, we do with respect to events and projects specifically. Um, and um, when we want to visualize stuff, we use the Augur um, and it not um, and Grimoire for that. So that's that's a brief idea. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Lord. Okay, any other questions? All right, so essentially that's where we are at right now. And um, uh, that's the different um, work, uh, different work streams that we're talking about. But um, like I said, one of our main goals as a project, not specific to the Asia chapter, but of the chaos project is to standardize metrics. And um, like I said before, Asian voices in that um, sphere are very less. So um, I've also broached the subject of um, potential collaboration with, with uh, the lead of um, the Open Chain Working Group for India. And uh, we'll be uh, we are going to catch up in the next few weeks to actually determine the scope of the collaboration because the Indian Open Chain Working Group was also rebooted recently due to lack of activity and uh, some of the work that they plan to do is around uh, education and uh, technical, um, uh, you know, not technical, sorry, and conveying of um, uh, the value prop, right, of... Um, adoption of open source um, to their respective employers. So we, we're going to formulate some um, guidelines around that. So I think that ties in well to what Chaos is trying to do. 
and uh, i approached uh, those people uh, and uh, we're going to have a conversation with them soon uh, and hopefully see where we can collaborate so that's the bit about uh, indian open chain working group um, any questions Uh, the last bit is around, uh, you know, the uh, streamlining bits that I spoke about earlier. So, um, a lot of people um, in uh, the Japanese Open Chain Working Group expressed concerns about our uh, meetings being recorded and our um, and the content being available publicly. Uh, that that was one of the challenges expressed in actually collaborating with us. And the second challenge was obviously the fact that the meetings were held at an unfriendly time for them because uh, a lot of the meetings other than this one are held at uh, night, uh, night or midnight timings for most of us. So one of the ways that we actually came up uh, was to explore the possibility of uh, conducting meetings under the Chatham House rule. Now, for those of you who do not know what the Chatham House rule is, um, it's basically that you can um, take away the content of the meeting by anonymizing the uh, names behind it. Uh, so you're not allowed to actually, um, you know, attributed to anyone but you can take away whatever um uh sort of uh information was conveyed from there and use it for whatever purposes so one of the ways we thought of was to uh explore that option when it comes to not just the Japanese but also other areas um of the uh not other areas other nationalities and other um uh, sections of people because a lot of people might have uh, actual concerns over their uh, um, information being recorded. So there might be, you know, people who are dissuaded from joining these calls. So uh, we would conduct one uh, call under the Chatham House rule uh, for specific work streams, and uh, then instead, uh, and then um, the information could be taken from those calls and actually, um, uh, you know, conveyed on the main call. Now, uh, how we do this and uh, for which work streams we do this uh, remains to be seen because right now there is only, um, you know, interest around the OSPO and the metric development work stream, but, uh, and that is the only one that's seeking input that is uh, sort of also um, requiring people from uh, such uh, restrictive places to join. So um, that's the possibility that we're exploring with uh, the metrics development and OSPO working group. Um, if there are similar people interested in such a, a call. And the idea would be to have um, me as a bridge uh, between the W's, uh, WG, that is the uh, OSPO or the metric development meeting and the one governed by Chatham House. So um, since a lot of the work overlaps, um, providing updates uh, would be sort of easy. And um, the Slack messages are linked um, so that, you know, there's full transparency around the work that we are doing right now in this case. Any questions around that, please? Please feel free to ask questions. Uh, there's nothing like stupid questions or dumb questions. Please feel free. Um, I see I that. To say, I just wanted to say hello because I came ah, in a little bit hi. late. And because I know you're, you're probably talking a lot, so I thought I'd just give you a little bit of a break by saying hello. How are you going? <laughs> Hi, Roland. Uh, I did not see you coming, uh, so I am sorry about that. Uh, but yeah. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I was also talking to some people that I'd like to you to to get introduced to as well. Um, yep. Maybe later on down the at the bottom of the, of List, the yep. yep. 
so um as just um there was just up these were just updates and uh, most of them are basically um similar to what we spoke the last time we met uh, basically i had conversations with uh, uh the previous chaos asia lead regarding uh, you know how this was done before and uh, what was the work done and basically the challenges and um, there's also the um, collaboration upcoming collaboration with indian open chain working group that um, uh is potentially on the table i reached out to them for the standardization bits and um also for the could problem, i get a would yeah. it be possible to get a link to the if the indian open chain working group has a has a, a link to it to, to explain what it is because that would be interesting oh yeah sure 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 i can i can link that here i will um so open chain is basically a project and uh, i reached out to the project as a whole and then um i saw that the indian um chapter for it actually was being rebooted similar to um how i reached out to the japanese and the chinese folks i just posted it on their slack channel but uh, with the indian uh chapter there's i I think only a couple of folks involved so i just directly reached out on dm but i can definitely give you the links to each of these chapters uh and where i reached out and uh we can sort of take it from there does it make sense yeah yeah okay so and then uh regarding the um communication bits with japan uh japanese open chain working group that we spoke about last time uh there was the uh there was the concern that a lot of folks um had in the working group around joining calls because they were recorded and uh they probably required uh you know yeah, them I to saw actually that. i saw that yeah so we're exploring the possibility of conducting these under the Chadama's rule um, for specific work streams again, uh, because there might be more people who actually have the same concern. So we've actually yeah. posted messages on those two Slack channels. And that was where we are at when you came in, I think. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. No, I, was, uh, I, caught, I caught that bit. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, cool, cool, cool. Okay. So next up, I think um, I'm really not sure if uh, um, we can do this, but uh, there's a potential for us to have uh, a Chaos Asia booth at uh, the Community Over Code Asia conference, which is in July. Um, logistics are being figured out currently. We're not sure. Uh, so there's a potential. Uh, nothing is, you know, on paper yet. Um but uh, given that, uh, one of the things that um, I wanted to float by this um, chapter's members, uh, which are not all right now because y'all attended a call. So, yeah. Uh, but uh, thoughts it's on... One yet. It's the biggest one yet. <laughs> yeah, so... yeah. So, I just wanted to know all of your thoughts or suggestions on partnering with... Um, other Asian events and organizations like um, what uh, do you feel it would be worthwhile at this point to actually have that would it be an overkill um, what what are your thoughts I want to hear from everyone I'll go last okay so I mean uh the rest of you, um, please, if uh, you'll have understood what we do, um, uh, if by the way that I've <laughs> conveyed, uh, do you all think it would be worthwhile to actually partner with other Asian events or organizations? Yeah, uh, sorry, Leon, yeah, definitely, I guess, would help to partner with others. Um, Right. So one of the things, again, I will give others the chance to talk, but I also just wanted to say this because um, I demonstrated the DEI event badging process, right? Uh, not demonstrated so much as to just show how it worked, but um, uh, a good way, in my opinion, to make inroads um, would be to recommend that they actually go through the DEI badging process. 
and have them attend our calls to ask questions because a lot of them don't even know this existence. It's it was actually pretty recently introduced. Uh, it was introduced by the Chaos Africa folks who also created this um, in January 2024. So um, it I think it would help in that sense uh, to make inroads and then probably um, also ask if, um, you know, we could partner. Uh, does anybody else have any thoughts? Uh, Gersamar, Manal, Naveen. Roland has thoughts, I know that. So I'm going to get to him last. I always have thoughts. <laughs> but I can always go last. Yeah. I, I mean, more the merrier. I can't hear you. Sorry. The more the merrier. I'm sorry, I, I your voice got caught out. It's my internet. I'm really sorry. I'm asking you to repeat. But, I'm saying uh, the more the merrier. We can, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Your voice got cut. It might, it might probably be my internet. So uh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Manal. Uh, yeah. No, any be. questions? Uh, can you uh, explain like uh, when we say collaborating with other Asian events or organization, like what sort of activities are we aiming at? That's a good question. Um, so. Essentially, when uh, at most of these events, like for example, First Asia, when we went there, uh, uh, it was primarily Daniel again from Bataja who um, took the onus and the responsibility. But um, at Community Over Code Asia, if we intend going, uh, what we're planning to do is have a booth. Um, and um, Zhao, actually, the previous. Uh, Chaos Asia lead is also from there. So she's uh, she said that if, you know, we can make it, like uh, whoever is going to make it can make it, uh, can actually, uh, we can actually set up a booth and have. So we have all the um, stuff that's required to man the booth, but we don't have the stuff that's actually required for someone to go there, which is the logistics bit. So that's what we're figuring out right now. Uh, but essentially, Partnering would mean um, actually uh, either giving a talk or, um, uh, you know, be having a booth there. And the third bit would uh, be having um, like some sort of partnership wherein you talk, uh, wherein you amplify their content over your channels in some form or another. Um, or partner with them in some form or another. Like, uh, that's that's exactly why I said the DEI badging process, right? Like, that's another uh, good way of um, them showing partnership with us that, uh, hey, you know what, uh, the we've, we've been, um, you know, a part of this. Uh, we've been going through this process for our event and we are uh, actually partnering with them. So, Partnering, not in terms of like actual monetary partnering, but um, uh, I would say maybe like a more of a community sort of a, a partnership wherein uh, you sort of just aid them in uh, the events uh, wherever possible. And if um, they have a slot um, where you can actually speak, you amplify the purpose that you're there for. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, so it would be beneficial only for us for uh, the promotion of the Chaos Asia chapter across this event and building the uh, networking or the connection options with the other groups. I think we are good to partnering with more and more events and all that. Yeah, but uh, again, the concern here is um, logistically, uh, it's a little unfeasible because um, we currently not like um, sustained uh, in terms of like, you know, financial support coming in. Like we have very limited resources to go with and attending conferences. Like we might get a free booth and we might get a speaking opportunity, but uh, sustenance of that uh, sort of travel and sort of um, other logistic issues, right? That's that's the uh, that's the crux that I was actually looking for. So, um. 
sorting that out is obviously going to be a larger part of where we are going to be. Um, like here, South Africa has a lot of uh, tie-ups with other organizations, even from a monetary perspective. So that was, I, I think that is after a year of it being uh, an actual chapter. So we're not there yet. We're just two months into our inception. So, I mean, this is a great idea. I also think that it's a great idea uh, because obviously I suggested it. That's one thing, but uh, <laughs> not going to say that I don't think it's a great idea. But uh, also the thing is that like sustenance is one of the things that I um, want to focus on when and want to also convey my concerns around when I'm talking about, um, you know, such partnerships like if they do not involve like a lot of travel and involve just like actual community amplification and if we have the resources for that it's great uh but it's terms and conditions apply till we have the self-sustaining capability to actually send people to conferences uh so i also wanted to put that out um naveen yeah. do you have any thoughts manuel sorry i cut you off there but yeah yeah, it's definitely at this uh, stage for our chapter, uh, it's a bit concerning uh, with the all financial and monetary uh, requirements. So I don't know like uh, how we could manage it and uh, sort of uh, collaborate with the event or, or uh, like uh, in future, what other uh, sources of, uh, I would say, uh, sponsorship or uh, 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 monetary uh, help we could aim for for the Asia chapter? Again, good question. So um, it depends on the kind of work we do as well. So Chaos Africa has been targeting a lot of the grassroots efforts uh, in terms of like actual advocacy and um, raising awareness around open source. And this was in Africa, similar to how... Uh, Chaos um, Latin America and uh, the other chapters are aiming at, uh, you know, just amplifying the message and raising awareness around open source. So um, it depends on the organization that's also sponsoring us. So there could be, um, again, I cannot tell you what it will be because it depends on what the organizations want to give money to. And I'm not part of an organization that gives money to people. So I don't know. Uh, but typically when um, uh, the sponsorships that go to Chaos Africa are around, uh, you know, enabling that awareness and enabling that sort of... Uh, work that they are doing um at the grassroots level of raising awareness of of you know facilitating the spread of open source in africa so they get grants and uh, they get uh, these sort of um, sponsorships from uh, different organizations to do that sort of work so um I mean, if we, we could move into that, but essentially, given the community that we already have at hand um, of people who are primarily already in this field and who are entrenched in this field, we have to see who we partner with strategically and um, seek out sponsorships from strategically um, and then, you know, broaden our perspective uh, rather than, uh, you know, emulating what Kiyas Africa is doing. And that's my two cents. Um, it's not necessarily where we should be heading or where we need to head, but uh, it doesn't make sense from like, like Africa is a very different continent as compared to Asia. Uh, although we have similar challenges uh, with respect to like, uh, uh, you know, getting involved in open source. Uh, a lot of the uh, Asian um, you know, audience that we talk to already know what open source is about in some some form or another. They're more well versed. So outreach and advocacy sure is helpful, but I don't think that should be the only target that we look at. Um and diversify among and we have a diverse audience, a more diverse audience as compared to Africa. So given that um balance uh the sponsorship or the grants that we seek out will be significantly different so the compensation 
uh, so the logistics that they normally work through are through these grants and through these outreach activities that they carry out. But did that answer your question? Got it. So you are saying like apart from the uh, uh, advocacy and so stuff, so which uh, Africa chapter is uh, uh, what get, uh, seeking the funds or so we would be more involved in some like uh, technical partnerships or something like that with the organizations or the not sponsors. technical partnerships per se, but um, they're also involved in like um, hosting conferences, like specific conferences related to chaos project and uh, their lead root Ikega uh, is also um uh you know, tying up with various, uh, so the DEI badging that I showed you, it uh, was done in partnership with GitLab and GitHub. So um, to figure out that niche, it takes a bit of time um, to figure out. Un uh, it necessarily does not need to be just technical. It can be non-technical too. Um, outreach and advocacy is one part. Um, uh, doing stuff like DI event badging is one part, uh, hosting conferences is one part. So there needs to be a multi-pronged approach. We just need to figure out what our multi-pronged approach is. And given that we're very early in the conversation for that, uh, since we're bootstrapping, it's, um, it's, it's just a suggestion that I'm floating at this point and nothing too concrete. I but uh, do you know about this travel assistance uh, given on the uh, this uh, event website? Yep, I do. Uh, I do understand that travel assistance is there, but um, the travel assistance normally is uh, for people who have actually submitted a CFP. Um, I did not submit a CFP to Community Over Code Asia. They actually invited us to be there and we only have a booth uh, so far. Like the speaking slot is also up in the air. It's not for sure. So normally when you have a CFP actually um, submitted and you have it accepted is when you can request for the travel assistance. Um, and uh, Chaos also has travel assistance, by the way, but again limited budget to work off of given the number of verticals and horizontals and regions we support uh so there's there's obviously you know places where you use it more and places where you use it less based on the priority so that's that's what you're figuring out right everyone else could use also. yep Uh, Naveen, any views? Uh, yeah, I'm still grasping at uh, uh, the things that are going on. And yeah, I believe uh, uh, this would be basically for outreach and uh, advocacy of uh, uh, the uh, chaos Asia, I guess. So uh, I think that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Roland, uh, do you want to go next? Because you're the last one. Yeah, I think it's a, a good idea. And I think it ties into the last agenda item that I was talking about, which is this um, keeping track of communities that are, that are linked. Uh, and I was that they did this thing in this uh, collaborations workshop where they were talking about RSE communities. But I think that could actually, I, I kind of work in between open source communities, research software communities, and research infrastructure communities. So... For me, it'd be really interesting to be able to pull, use this as a, as an excuse, really, to reach out to individual people who might be interested in this conference and saying, hey, would you like to try to be a part of this, even though we may not have a clear idea of how we're going to do, to do this? From my point of view, this would be a lot easier if they had virtual booths rather yep. than physical booths. The first one, the yeah. And, and it just goes back to the point that I was trying to make to the DEI committee that physical in-person events uh, need to at least be hybrid. And if they are being hybrid, they need to lean towards including the most marginalized people in that area, which is usually people who are 
online. Yep. And at the moment, what they're doing is uh, doing their best, but they don't have a real clear idea. They're, they're leaving a lot of people behind, even with their DEI gold badges. And so, again, I can't have really had that conversation with them because they're doing it at 1 a.m. in the morning for me, which isn't really that inclusive. So there's a there's a few things here going on, but I think it's worthwhile. I think it's worthwhile reaching out. And in fact, the the reason I put that communist thing in there is because I wanted to add a few Asian events that I think we could all connect with. Um, there's a biohackathon that's uh, headed by a, a lovely man called Toshiaki over in Japan. And there's a few other things that have been happening as well that I'd be really keen to sort of bring Asian community uh, members together that are working in this sort of open open source or research software kind of situation. So yeah, definitely would be keen. Love to throw some ideas around um, and definitely help to reach out and find some other people who might want to collaborate on this. I actually, uh, it's funny that you say that uh, because um, I just wanted to show you what I've, unofficially started working on it's uh it's it's towards the chaos project but since we don't have a repo or uh, some sort of um uh you know a page yet in general manol is actually working on that and i think that's the last update for the day personally but um i just want to show you what i've been working so yep uh, this is a private project that I've been working on. <laughs> and uh, this is one of the things that uh, I did not intend on displaying till uh, it actually got done because it's it's still very much a work in progress. So I actually wanted to do this. And uh, I love it. Yeah. I love it. So this, can you, can you go this, to the, yeah. I was going to say, can you go to the communist website? Uh, yeah. Um, put a head in there, because the thing I liked about the community's website, if you go to the link where it is, I don't, the community's um database, I think it is that for the hack day we are stake yourself on the community's database. Is it? Yep. And it just gives you a nice little thing, and then you can drop it down. So you've got a little bit of a narrow thing, or you can search and. Because I think they're using Quarto as their front end or something like that. I don't know how it works. But I, I just thought this plus what you had there is just adding it in. It's just a TSV file, a CSV file to, yeah. to fill it in. But we could make it yeah, look. Yeah, that's a very good one. So what I'm going to do is um, see when, uh, firstly, I uh, I think Manuel's work that he's been doing around like the page, that would be our first step to uh, actually getting things done um, and official. What, I mean, we're already official. It's not like we're not, but uh, it's just that that would be there on the web page. And we're probably also going to get different web pages to our initiative. Uh, so that's in progress. Uh, the second thing is I'm going to request for a repository where we can work off of this because um, I think this would be very valuable to have. And it's also one of the goals to actually understand what are the different communities on a re national level or a regional level or a whatever level in Asia? It will actually help for that. And specific to Asia, I think there's a lot lot more cool stuff being done here than, you know, we let people know. And I think it's time to spotlight those. So this would be a very good way to start. And it's also a very good way to understand who are the people we potentially collab we can collaborate with? Because uh, I know specific to India, a lot of uh, people are there who are doing very cool work. Uh, but uh, you know, it's it's difficult to actually um, reach out uh, because they they do it uh, like on a siloed basis, or they do it as part of communities that aren't as well known um, as a lot of the communities that are. Uh, so, um, one of the, one of the, uh, things... one of the... yeah. Sorry, you No, I was going to say, one of the things that I realized is it's actually kind of broken into two areas that I thought. One, which is communities, and the other one is events that are sort of tied yeah. to that. So it'd be really great yeah. to have 
two things where the community members would say, hey, these are some of the events there. Because when I when I talk around, and I, just to your point, um, what you were saying really rings true, is that I just don't know what's what's going on there um, around Asia, and I, I should be better informed uh, being yep. in this time zone. So, yeah, this would be great. Uh, that you, I, I really want to go back to your your other thing now because I want to have a look at the 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 communities that you had in your in your other repo yeah i mean they're not much uh most of them are people i've actually uh just spoken to um or have worked with so um essentially this is going to go uh into a repo sometime and uh, we're going to make it more comprehensive uh, but another thing that i also want to let the people on this group know is we Today, we're going to have a conversation with one of those that is First United uh, around potential collaboration. Uh, so uh, they actually are heavily involved in, um, uh, not heavily, I wouldn't say, but uh, they are sort of uh, involved in uh, various efforts, right from, you know, doing grassroots level stuff of, uh, um, you know, facilitating courses and stuff and to events wherein they're actually doing hackathons and hosting these city clubs. And uh, there are also people who are wor working on policy initiatives um, at the national level. And there's also courses that's actually teaching you how to you know, get involved in all of this. So there's multiple levels uh, that they work at. And um, I actually identified a few problem areas there. So that's a conversation we're going to have. And uh, another... Um, uh, update is that uh, uh, there was code for GovTech, which actually is another organization. Um, it's not an organization; it's an e it's a program. Uh, that's around uh, you know coding for um, BPG DPI, uh, which is Digital Public Goods and Digital Public uh, Initiatives here in India. So we are gonna have a conversation with them um on Monday. Uh, regarding, you know, again, potential collaboration ideas, because they're doing very, very similar work with respect to um, contributor uh, readiness frameworks and uh, standardizing those frameworks. Uh, that, I mean, we're already doing a lot of, we're already trying to do a lot of standardization work. So that's, that's those are the two things that have come up on the horizon and they've been very fairly short notice. So that's, that's one thing. So, I was looking at other, eight, I mean, I was thinking if these are good areas to actually pursue in terms of long-term strategy, not just in chaos Asia, but also towards like unifying the whole cause, not just India, but also pursue these conversations with other local groups, not just, you know, the ones in India. I like it. I, I assume that's private because I was checking your yeah, website. Yeah, yeah, it is private yet because I did not want to um I did not want to release it before we actually commit it into the repo. Uh, that's the official Chaos Asia repo that we're gonna have, which I'm gonna request for um once we have the page because if we don't have the page, we don't need a repo. We don't like have any. You know, we don't have any formal um official web page to our name right now, so there is. Like nothing we can work on the back of. So once we have the page ready or at least the page updated, um, that's that's going to tie into the repo and that's going to actually do it. If you'd like, I can give you uh, collaborator access. That's that's not a problem. But um, this is this is so far going to remain uh, private till we actually have a repo because the content is going to mirror there. And then we're going to make more amends. Like I know it's in the exact opposite direction of keeping stuff open source <laughs> but it's essentially just um collecting very basic data and what i aim to do is something that you've done with the communers i mean something that has been done with the communers thing like have a drop down and stuff like that for which we will need help a lot of help because my web development skills are rusty at best hey man i'm just gonna copy whatever they did i'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not going to try and change it. Hey, I also saw your open source mentorships program from about three years ago. Yeah. I thought that was a pretty cool idea too. There's there's a lot yeah. of opportunity to bring some of this stuff together. And nobody actually PR'd. And so I was very hopeful that somebody would actually keep updating that bit um, because 
it, it would have been really helpful to actually do that uh, for people who are getting started. So that was another thing I was hoping to actually maintain um, along with this um, in our Chaos Asia repo. But uh, yeah, remains to be seen because it's a lot of work for like um, just one or two people to be undertaking. So there's a, definitely a lot of potential here for people to get involved um, once we create the repo and once that web page is updated. So um, I'll I'll get I'll talk to Elizabeth about creating that repo uh, and uh, see where we can work from there because it would be good to have that, that sort of uh, website. Um, that you just said, even if you're just copy pasting the entire source code. <laughs> Why would you not? Anyway, I have to go. Sorry for chatting so much at the later at the end. It was really good to to catch up. I've got a list of other people I'd like to introduce you all to, and I'm not okay. sure how to do it. So you may Slack see some. Is the best way, I believe, um, because they or or you know have them come over to one of our meetings if they can. I don't know. They, they might not be that interested in chaos, but I think as community members, communities of communities, I think would be a, a might be a, a different forum for us to to chat in, and yeah, I can sure. sort of chatting with the other. And I gotta go, but thank nice to see everyone here. Um, yep. good to see you again, Manuel, as well. I'll um, yeah. I'll catch up with you next time. Oh, uh, next time I might be not be able to make it, but I'll pop up when I can. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for stopping by. Yep. Bye. So um to wrap up um I think we're almost uh eleven minutes over time so uh I think one of the things that um uh, Manul was working on was the website uh so um Manul did you get any other comments um other than the ones that I had put in there no I could only see your comments. Okay, um, so if anybody has actually not joined in um, Chaos Asia, just a second, I'm just going to uh, stop sharing this one and start uh, sharing the Chaos channel. So if anybody has actually not uh, joined the Chaos Asia uh, channel on the Chaos Slack, please consider joining um, so that we can actually, um, we can actually link to uh you can actually stay updated with everything uh manul has shared a doc it should be visible in your history so uh please leave your comments on the doc uh, if you feel like there's an additional um rewrite required to whatever is there uh, that manul has actually suggested um so this is the doc just a second um uh, again, I'm just going to share my desktop now. It's, it's too annoying. So, yeah. So, this is the uh, doc and um, I'll paste the link in the chat as well. So, please leave your comments here. And, uh, and uh, we can, you know, do this as sync. It's not necessary that you do it right away. But uh, we shall time box this activity to next week. Um, and uh, next week, I would um, request Manuel that next week, maybe um, on a Thursday, um, uh, by th uh, Wednesday, EOD, if there are no comments, I would uh, request Manuel to actually submit this to Elizabeth, who would update this on the page. Uh, that's on chaos.community. Yeah. So that's pretty much it from my side. Um, does anybody have any last parting questions? Because I realize that we are a little over time right now. Hmm. All right, then. So I'm thinking that there are no questions um, and assuming because nobody's raised any. So if there are, please feel free to leave them on the Slack channel. We'll get to them as soon as possible. And uh, see you in the next edition of the call, I guess, in uh, two weeks from now. See you. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye, everyone.